What's up, everybody? Getting a couple things set up. The Dotato. What's up, buddy? Blockbuster. Somebody want to tell him? Daddy, what up? I'll love him to the moon. What did I unplug? No, man, I haven't yet. I'm going to get that done tomorrow, I think. Didn't expect put the damn thing together. Take three hours. What's up, everybody? Was it Wednesday? Happy Wednesday. What a Wednesday it was. Hope y'all made a lot of money today. Did pretty damn good myself. Yeah, I thought I'd go together quicker than that. Shan, what's up? the music back a little bit tonight guys uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time doing tutorial stuff I want to burn through some screens um, we sold a lot of stocks today so uh, positions a lot in cash want to figure out the next set of tickers that are going to print us some money <clears throat> so do some fatty on the first cook yeah I'm going to do a uh, pork butt trying to kind of glaze everything if you know what I mean um but I want to burn through the screener real quick, pick up some new plays for the rest of the week. Uh, i got a lot of crowd request stuff to go through as well, checking up on some stocks that we're already currently playing, look at some ones that people have some questions about, and then uh, we'll take a look at some macro market movements because that big SPY dip tonight or uh, today could be an indicator that we're seeing some reversal on some overall stuff. But uh, let's get right overlay up here. <clears throat> And get moving. Toaster, what's up? Yeah, NTN was... Whoa. Whoa. NTN was fucked up, though, because it dipped down real hard before it ripped like that with that SPY dip. And it triggered a lot of people's stop losses and then took right off after that. So that's that's not a feel-good. We're celebrating our gains today with Jelly Belly and whiskey because I'm an American and we can fucking do that. But, style him. Finviz.com, screener settings you can find in other VODs, also in some of the uh, Discord commands. If you are new to screening stocks, I highly recommend charting every single one that pops up so you can understand the difference between the ones that look good and the ones that don't. Get Neuro popping back up on here. We played Neuro, we made good money on it. She hit every price target we expected it to. Went into sing on your first OTC and was briefly up $80 this morning. Good shit, good shit. <clears throat> Neuro looks like she's still trading in the same channel that we played the swing on last time. Um, it struggled to clear that 465 resistance for the monthly. Uh, sing in TSMP, we can take a look as well. I didn't have TSMP on the list. I wanted to chart that one already. That one sounds familiar. A um, couple things to jump out at me real quick on replaying Neuro. This upper border on the RSI algorithm has pulled down pretty significantly with this with this little dip here, which is usually not a great sign. Um, it's constricting volatility, meaning there's less room on top for it to continue to go up, which we get a confirmation on this kind of triple top you see where it just at 470 refused to go up so uh, Neuro I'd put on watch just because it did screen it is still in the channel that we're looking for it is approaching the bottom border of the RSI there but uh, not sold on it yet you can see our predictions are dashed lines here pretty much in line with what we expected so that's nice 
Nightbot, quit being a dick. Do OTC stocks follow the same technical analysis as penny blue chip stocks? Uh, technical analysis applies to every stock trading pattern regardless of the price, um, regardless of the volume. The things that you run into that defeats TA are heavy fundamental influence and big macro market movements. So on a, something like uh, a GME, um, where it's just running for no fucking reason, you'll get to use technical analysis on shorter term stuff. So like your your one minute, five minute, 15 minute charts, you're still gonna see those same patterns. You'll still look for the same engulfing candles and stuff like that. And to an extent, you can establish some resistance and support lines at, at one hour and four hour marks. But with something that's memed that heavily and that has so much outside influence, TA gets kind of defeated there. And the same thing if um, it's being affected by macro movement. If you saw earlier today, um, the entire market took a big dip right before the Fed uh, was going to speak. For whatever reason, that happens and it just automatically corrects back. But as the Fed dropped a few points, literally almost every single ticker on the market came down with it a certain percentage point. And what can get fucked up with that is like what we saw with Isaiah, I-Z-E-A, where it pulled it out of pattern, right? It pulled it out of this channel that we were hoping to trade on. So anything that's already bottomed out, same thing with NTN, it can create a much harder dip than you would normally occur and creates anomalies in the pattern that you're tracking and fucks that TA portion of it up. It's there, Jim. Yes, I am still. I have both common stock and uh, a couple calls for them. I'm still bullish on that. But we are going to revisit, though, because like I said, this this big dip right here, that anomaly that, that spike, the SBY drop created, is concerning. Um, but So pivoting back to the screener, Neuro we'll keep an eye on, but I'm not real optimistic about it where it's at. Uh, where were we at? BCDA I've been in for two months now. I think some of us are still in with me. I think we're up about 50% from entry on this one. Still in great shape, looking good after hours. We've got a really high, long price targets on BCDA. Um, anybody that's looking to... If I were going to add on this one, it would probably be as close to 475 as I could. So BCDA is still in good shape. Pixie's one that RX Boost sent me last night that looked like she was getting close to wanting to play. Let's take a look at it. Um... Pixie, for those of you that are in one of the trading discords, made its way out of the uh, OTC market some time ago and has been doing really well ever since. We got a big spike up through 469 um, as early as late January, so that's nice to see. This little ripple and failure here, though, um, could be the start of what's referred to as an Adam and Eve pattern, which is a dramatic spike and then a resulting lower gradual downward curve, which is an indicator of bear movement. That wouldn't be confirmed until it came down to this trend line that we've established right here. So what we would look for is kind of a similar situation right here where we played it before, whereas if it bottoms out where that trend line's at and we get a reversal indicator, a reversal candle, we would make our purchase somewhere Looks like it would be just over three dollars and that would be that would give us confluence with the support that was built back at the end of january before it took off um so yeah just just so we can kind of mark our note here this is what we would expect the 50 ema may pull up to give us that support and it kind of looks like it wants to do that just follow along that trend line and come up here but I don't know, it might curl in. If the if the daily comes down and the weekly comes up and we get some kind of confluence of support right here just over three, I would feel good about buying in. But she's still on watch for now. Um, none of these really jump out at me. CTIB. DSS is all over the fucking place. What happened to them? HSTO is on a nice run. Wisa popping back up. We've made money on Wisa. Some folks are still in it, looking for some of those longer price targets. We charted the shit out of this one. Um, you can see it broke out of this ascending broadening wedge and kind of screwed some stuff up there. What it didn't do, though, is we were looking at a possible head and shoulders here, but it didn't complete that right shoulder. So we're not a full bearish on Wisa right now. If it gets back into pattern here and can find some support, 
we could get it back on track to that $4.70 price target. RSI is kind of mixed as well. If you're still in Wiesa, it's still in good shape, still in good pattern. Um, it's establishing a new set of lows that are on a pretty aggressive upward track, which is nice to see. Not real thrilled about where her support's at, though. I, I think she's got to come down a little bit. I don't think it's going to maintain this trend. So that's out. Uh, Hoth already made its money. Double bottom on that. THMO, HEPA. PA throwing a little flag up. Uh, HEPA was a play of ours from before. Again, seeing a lot of repeat things. A couple things that jump out right away, right? Remember we saw earlier that upper RSI border on the other one? We see this one, the lower one's pulling up. So you're constricting how far down it will drop, which is nice to see. That, that confirms support at higher levels that technically shouldn't really have much there. And then you've got a really aggressive flag going on the daily. If we break into like the four hour charts, we can see that pennant um, starting to form. That's actually consolidating up, which is a lot of fun to see. Upward consolidation with continued upward pressure on top of the wicks as well is just a, that's a really strong flag there. So let's do a little homework. Let's break it out. We're going to chart this one. Um, <clears throat> so we're backing out to our monthly candles. Each one of these candles is a month worth of trading. We're going to set our support and resistance lines wherever the stock has trading has changed momentum anytime the price change uh, has made a drastic change in direction so comes down stops here this axis support and resistance if the price continues to go up stops here changes directions that's support and resistance so on and so forth we'll set this at each monthly change in direction and you can see this one already kind of provides that, so that's good. I'm happy with that. We'll dial it into the weekly now to kind of clarify further what we're looking at. And we'll do the same thing on the weeklies. Look for drastic changes in momentum. I like to use different colors because it helps me keep my head straight. Uh, same thing here. We'll set one there. And you can see this one kind of influences where the rest of these come at. So that's that's what we're doing is figuring out where we've been to see where we're going. Got an earnings date coming up too, which may influence some of this. Dial it back into the dailies. This is HEPA daily chart, kind of floating in the middle here. You can see this cluster of uh, trading that happened back in November is influencing the static movement that we're seeing around the $3 mark. So you can see the last time it tests it up in this area, end of December, the RSI algorithm, both the value and the upper border were all showing that it was just overbought, didn't have support. And we're getting kind of a similar condition here with it overshooting it, but that border pulling up on the bottom, to me, tells me that this flag that's forming is going to have support. somewhere in that 275 range for it to consolidate just under three and then I think we'll see a run after that so let's do a couple things one let's find our support in the short term we'll go into the hourly and we get a better idea of where it's at right now our RSI value on the short term is dropping as the price consolidates at a higher point which is a great sign and obviously, after hours, you can see that it's making some moves. And we might have a money printer. All of our EMAs are pulling up with that. This big spike in volatility. This morning around 10. Was that the SPY drop? Okay, yeah, so that explains that. We need to identify different anomalies and make sure that we're not uh, pigeonholing ourselves into anything. 
Um, let's get some... A little more music going. Music is provided by friend of the stream and just overall nice guy River W or uh, R I V V R V D E R on uh, Spotify. He makes music specifically for streamers and gamers that will not be subject to DMCA hits. So that'd be nice <laughs> if you're into that. So that was that was with the SPY hit. <clears throat> Joe Cool, what's up, buddy? If you're not familiar with my obsession with Bitcoin, it will be worth one hundred thousand dollars per coin in November. I like what HEPA is doing. I like the setup that it's got in this area. I don't think it's going to be recognized by a lot of people just because of how sloppy this upper portion is, but that's also going to create a little bit of risk for us. So what we want to do is determine where we think we're going to go. We'll take some trend lines and start at the beginning of the flagpole of the last period of consistent growth, which is this range right here. And we're going to set it right on top. Honestly, you could probably count down to 202, but we'll be conservative for now until we figure out where exactly this thing's going. I think the four hour chart gives us a better idea of what's happening. And what you'll see on the four hour is something we always like to see is an impending golden cross. This is where the 50 EMA crosses over the 200, indicating a dramatic move upward in price structure, which would be consistent with the completion of this flag right here on breakout. Charts of dope for a quick eagle fin. Ah, if we got time, we can take a look at some meme stuff. Make fun of the kids that are still in GME. You poor bastards. Given that golden cross, I don't think that's a real dip. The fact that she survived that 10 o'clock SPY stupidity without really budging. And where that next level of monthly resistance is at. God, I want to see if it comes down though. Alright, so here, here's, here's optimistic look, right? Optimistically, we get support pulling up around this 275 285 range right you'll see another dip tomorrow it'll be it'll make some moves pre-market it'll dip to 270 280 ish in that neighborhood and then reverse if i get a bullish reversal on like the one hour off of 275 to 285 that will confirm that this flag is completing and that we can count this entire operation as going up and you can see that by taking that uh, flagpole and setting our price target here there's a point of resistance there that's not too strong because it's based on daily movement but right here we're gonna expect a hiccup so if I were trading this I would want to get in somewhere under 275 would look for a 365 ish 364 PT and then set a trailing stop loss to carry us up to the next line of resistance at 410. So HEPA entry under 475. Single primary PT is going to be somewhere 364. Secondary PT 409. Stop loss is going to be a little sloppy though. We're going to have to stay in this thing for a little bit. We're going to say that anything failing this flag's lowest point at 272 is no good so we'll have a real short stop loss there and that will mitigate our risk on what is a pretty volatile potentially fallout play not typical of what we usually do <clears throat> so that's AGPA uh, NTN NTN we found and then 
it popped like within an hour of, it, of buying it. And today has been wild. It, it overreacted dramatically. So anytime you get these big macro dips, anytime you see uh, a huge drop in the stock price, if that stock still has support and that external influence goes away, like that SPY dip stopped, you're going to have an equally violent reactive movement, kind of like a pendulum. If it drops, it's going to come back the other way of price increase right out the gate. So that's what happened with NTN is it would have been on a normal upward track just based on the typical play that we do, but it dipped so hard past support and bounced off this 20 EMA line right here that when that macro influence, that major market dip went away, the recovery was dramatic as shit and it shot way up. And then it's got to settle back down. So you, you get this bouncing, trending. Let's see if we can't see it in like the five minute. Yeah, there you go. This kind of whipsaw thing where it dumps and then bounces back and then dumps again until it settles down kind of like a heartbeat. You've got to calm it down and establish some consistent movement. The reason why I did not execute a stop loss on NTN like we'd originally planned was because that downward movement was artificial. If you eliminate this dip, if you ignore that part of the data that we don't think should apply, we're still on track for our 679 PT way up to that next monthly resistance line. What's going to happen now because that did happen, because it is real, you could ignore it for a forecasting point, but from an expectations and a time frame standpoint, now what's going to happen is we're up after hours in it, right? What's going to happen is it's got to come back down and it's got to reestablish that consolidation that we were betting on before. So all this wild ass movement has to calm down. You can see our RSI algorithm is already starting to constrict that movement a little bit. So we'll get tighter and tighter stuff and it should consolidate between this 462 and $5 point. And once we break over that $5 point, that's when we'll have some major upward movement. We'll see it stall somewhere around $6 and then we'll kind of reassess it to see if we're going to make the full run to 679. So NTN still in good shape. I'm still in it. I'm still optimistic about it. I'm still bullish on it. Broadway financials too meany. Xbio is still doing work. Xbio was one that we had charted before, played before, and I exited. I know there's some folks that are still holding it because uh, the damn thing's still printing money. Check her out. Look at you, Bubby. You're doing good. Xbio doing us proud. A lot of you'll see that a lot of times too. Is a lot of these callouts, these low float plays that are that are based on a reversal in the stock price. Um, we get people that hang on to them longer if you just go back and kind of check in on where they're at some of these things are doing two three four five hundred percent over the course of several months um i'm not following or hanging on to anything that long so i don't see those returns but we're looking to make our money in quicker shots uh let's get to the crowd supplied list gsum and bkep are two picks that are popular in a discord server i frequently um, and we get right. If you guys have any that you want me to take a look at, I know I've only been streaming like once a week lately, but if you do have something that you want me to chart, if you have any questions about something intraday, macro movements that are affecting something, shoot me a message on Discord. We'll take a look at it. Worst case scenario, I don't get to it until we, we stream, and then I can kind of clip it, send it to you. That way you have a kind of a live stream breakdown of what we're hunting for. Uh, GMBL Esports Entertainment Group. This one's already off and running quite a bit. You can see it did 30% today, and then that's the third day of some pretty major runs. Uh, two things on big runners like this so you either have to back all the way out and look at it long term and see if that's sustainable growth, or you got to go short term and try and predict where it's headed. This one's a fairly recent one, IPO'd back in October 2010. So our monthly doesn't have a whole lot in this range outside of a few failures. Uh, December 17, January 18, and May of 18 all got up around here and collapsed and maintained a downward trend. Um, this is obviously a catalyst-driven growth. 
These boys got a deal somewhere or doing something decent because we've broken out of that downward trend. You see we get our double bottom here. This is the weekly charts. Our double bottom there is always a nice thing. It consolidated and then launched. And it's like we were looking at earlier on the flag on uh, HEPA. Um, that upward consolidation in a flag pattern is just super bullish. Like it's a super strong indicator. You should see at least some kind of lower high whenever you're getting a consolidation. But if you get that just wedge at the end of a flagpole, she's ready to go. And you can see that with GMBL, that one took off pretty well. Um, outside of that, nothing really supporting it. I am concerned that there's repetitive failures to get up um, beyond that $20 mark. But again, with it being a catalyst-driven play, you can't really tell where it's headed just yet. The RSI algorithm likes it. We do have support pulling up on the four hour. It left a few gaps there to fill, so that's a little worrying. Going now to the one hour chart. One hour chart on GMBL. This big gap right here is a hole in support that if this falls into could create some problems. But these are short term, so. Stoji did close above VWAP, your volume weighted average, which is a good indicator short term. Going to the 15 minute now. <clears throat> I'd be curious to see what's driving it, but now that we're here on the 15 minute, you can kind of get a better idea of the price movement that we're looking for. Um, it's pretty solid. If we take the start of this run, we'll ignore that big wick there. Shorter term, you can kind of be a little more judicious about your what data you ignore. Dobsky, what's going on, brother? The man, the myth, the legend. That trend line on the 15 minute there is what this has been following uh, for the past couple days. So that's nice to see staying consistent, at least on those uh, shorter term targets. So if we're going to maintain that that holds true, this is a solid entry point where she's closed at. And you can see a little bit of a whipsaw right here where it's curling up. Go back to the 15 minute. That gap right there is weird. I don't like that. Just an immediate dump. But it is bottomed out. The algorithm likes it. You're getting some constricting upper pressure. So, yeah, GMBL. Um, I think it has to either fill this gap to provide support or it consolidates here based on that 15 minute. So this, this block of growth that you're seeing on the daily right here that's our 15 minute trend line that it's built upon so if it continues to build support and then what do we got 15 minute is that the same as our daily Seventeen twenty nine. As long as she does not close this week under seventeen twenty nine, GMBL could build support in this range and test that monthly resistance that we saw several times, several months where there's been price failures at this point. So that seventeen twenty nine dollar point would be uh, GMBL's crutch. If it's able to support that, then we're money. If not. I think she's going to fall just like the rest of them did. Every time they got up around this price point, it'll devalue and dump back to at least under 14 and fill this gap here that we've got on the daily. Chilling, trying to understand a percent of what's going on. It's magic money geometry, dude. We draw shapes and then they print dollars. Next on the list is Visa. A big money one. Like I said, TA does apply regardless of where we are and the dollar values, it's why we focus on percents and not on how much money's actually in it. Because at the end of the day, it's just dollars, y'all. Treat it like a video game. That was November. Have that big. Everybody uses Visa for Christmas. Hmm. 
back out to the weekly. I don't really see much on the daily. There we go. Visa's following pretty much what the market's doing. You can see SPY here got kind of that similar structure. It is outrunning Visa a little bit, which is fine. Financial sector stuff's always weird. But these are the weekly candles. If Visa holds true in these points, probably going to consolidate through summer of next year before it really does anything drastic. This one's going to be so tied to macro movement, to the major market stuff, if we get the, the correction that we're expecting in uh, pretty much everything. We'll see her dip down as far as 165. If I were in Visa, I would still be holding just because it's such a massive company. You got to feel good about what it's doing. But for now, I think we'll see a brief pop. You'll get a good earnings report. What we got going on here? Yeah, everybody's getting in on the dividends. 32 is not bad, man. They had a good earnings. Overshot it by 8%. That's why you're seeing the growth here. I would imagine after the dividend sell-off stuff happens, because everybody buys in the stock, gets their dividends and bales. See some meandering in this area, and it'll tighten up in here through the next year. Again, I want to be real clear that I am expecting a major market correction because we're just get we're we're breaking all-time highs and seeing no dips, which is not healthy and it's not realistic. That's just not how markets work. So, Visa is going to follow that. When we see a big correction in the market. I think Visa will dump with it. And it's got room to fall under 170. If I were in Visa, I would hold, anticipating a recovery from that. If I were looking for entry into Visa as kind of a retirement play, um, I would personally want to get in under 170, though brief though it may be. I think that's supported by previous movement back here. Uh, AESE. A lot of folks optimistic about this one, myself included. We've done a little charting on it already. Um, in terms of anticipating what it's going to do. She blew up today, overshot of what we thought would have been a fairly conservative movement, uh, and just launched, which I'm not mad at. I like stuff that proves me wrong and just makes a bunch of money. All that took off. I was expecting it to just kind of hang out on this upward slope until February but she found support in a little cup and handle right here and launched good for her this downward stuff that you're seeing right now just means that it outran its support that's fine it's a perfectly healthy pullback red velvet what's up lots and clove some weed money <laughs> we're doing a lot of uh, weed stock stuff today in discord at least covering where it's going and looking at some of the indexes more of a whiskey guy myself but AES is in really good shape. Um, they've got a lot of price history in these levels, and you can see these these big slides, 353 to 524, 524 up to 10. Once you start breaking into these areas of no resistance, these are the monthly candles on AES. Um, it's just really hard not to be super bullish on it. It's been trading consistently since December. And these upward slopes, these step ups every time. And you can see it's starting to get more volatile as it grows in, the, in room. You see how, like, when there's there's more more resistance, you got tighter lines in here, the stock is not as free to run. Once you start shaking off those lower price line holders and you get into these bigger gap areas, it's uh, it launches. And I think we'll see, we'll see the same thing here. I think we'll see some consolidation on top of $3.00. And then jump right back into gapping up uh, above the 330 and 350 lines. Next major hold will be around 524. And then whew, 
<laughs> Talk about room to run. Very bullish on AESC. No great entry points to really be specific about outside just looking for a pullback. Uh, Jack Daniels tonight, Toaster. Typically my go-to. You can find it anywhere. Always been a Jack Daniels guy. Like Jameson and Scott from time to time, just depending on the occasion. But, yeah, AESC. We were wrong last time, and it just took the fuck off, so that's cool. <laughs> but uh, as long as we're going up. AESC expectation to consolidate around 3. Push this resistance points at 339 to 353. On up to a primary price target of 524. We'll reassess from there and just actually start taking a look at fundamentals. And see what kind of market cap these guys are looking at. But um, AESC I, I long would expect to be over 10. Pretty quickly. Hard to bet against them. Hard to bet against them. Sing! Let's look at an OTC real quick. If you do not have an OTC trader, if your platform does not allow OTCs, this probably won't apply to you. That nice little ripple. And there's exactly fuck all technical I can ID it. Lots of used vehicle and expanding clothes, medical stuff. Okay. OTCs get weird because it's it's such a volatile and high volume market that anything outside of a couple hours, uh, you're really playing with fire. She's dipping RSI value, staying way over 70 though, and you got some nice spikes pulling up to get you above there. It failed that 20 EMA here on the four hour. Dive into the one hour, get a bit closer. That's a better look. That's a better look. That's what we want to see. Very tight, clean consolidation. You can see that top off from the this kind of whipsaw pattern here, blocking off our highs. Those lows coming up, and then the RSI is just absolutely bottomed out. I think she's gonna rip again. He just looked just just eyeballing this uh, 0.04 area here, and we, we can even include that spike. Because we know she's going to be volatile as shit. And throw five pennies on it. You're talking about... Single point. Sing being worth 13 cents. In a matter of days, if not the next one. For an OTC, she looks good. I've got a Fidelity account. I might pick a couple of them up on there. Uh, Weeble, Robinhood, guys. You can't touch OTCs. Get yourself a diversified platform and they might be able to help you out. TSNP next on the list. Another one that's running. This one's dipping back down trying to find a home. Tesoro Enterprises. Distribution. Distribution and tankers are going to be a real big thing over the next couple months. Just because everything's going to start opening back up and people got to ship their shit. Uh, this one's going to be purely FA but fundamentals play outside of what I can tell you in the next few hours same thing just going to the four hour great looking great looking flag here you got the pennant built it's getting a little weaker here I'd want the RSI value to bottom out on this bottom border first so entry if I were looking for this I'd want it at like 120 But just in really good shape overall. And what I mean what I mean by this is you're getting consistent, consistent pull in on the price. So like midday tomorrow. Should start to see some nice rockets. It's leveling out after hours. Been in TNS or TSMP since 09. They're waiting the merger from Humble and listed on NASDAQ. CEO has his nose in blockchain. It's all promising stuff. Fundamental analysis is something that's absolutely critical to your game if you're doing these kind of big momentum trades. Um, understanding the forward looking statements, understanding the person in charge, the CEO being interested in blockchain, and, and, and having. 
uh, a good head for what the future of the company and how it relates to the current hype in the market. So things like blockchain, weed, electric vehicles, like all that stuff's the flavor of the moment and everybody's really jumping on top of it. So if you can find some that are hyping in that area, toss a merger on top of it, you're in great shape. But short term, TSMP, four hour looks good. I like the pennant. I like it to 13 cents. Or, uh, that was the last one was 13 cents. We do the same approach here. To do a little better than an eyeball. We'll take this one for the point of breakout. You're talking trying to push $3. I don't know what the timeline is on merger or anything like that, but she's set up real nice. I don't see any reason to hate it. Uh, G sum. Back out to the dailies. Oh boy. Okay. Kind of all over the place, aren't we? Double bottom into December. What the fuck were they doing in January? Back out to the monthlies. Did they do a reverse split or is this just some random acquisition propped up on resistance and support from the end of no end of 2019 it's pushing up and out of that though I like that weekly of GSUM just a massive gain September 20 So I was looking, I thought I saw that we might have had a chance for an inverse head and shoulders here, but I don't think uh, that October growth portion came up high enough to support that. Back into the weekly. Could make the case for a really sloppy cup and handle here. Um... your breakout that's in line with the handle there and that would make that your breakout point just for academic purposes again this is the weekly of GSUM you would take the depth of the cup and apply it to the point of breakout the point of breakout being a line drawn from the top of the left shoulder straight through the right shoulder peak and where that reversal occurs. That reversal is consistent with where the weekly and daily EMAs meet up. You also have a pull up on the RSI border as well as an increase in the RSI value itself. Does it matter how long the handle is? No, so the handle's length, again, is going to uh, need to stay within at least it can't one it can't go below 50% of the cup so if it drops below 50% of the depth of where the cups at that's a failure in the pattern and if it stays above that and then breaks above this line that you would draw from the uh, left shoulder to the right shoulder that would be where your breakouts at so if it stays in this range and then pops up out of here you're good and you're also looking for that right shoulder trend line as an expected breakout point. So it lasts a little bit longer than that. But that's what you're looking for at the end of, at the end of the cup is for it to stay above 50% and looking for it to break above that shoulder line. <clears throat> yeah, the duration of the handle is entirely subjective. Obviously, if it just flutters and stays there longer than the cup exists, you're gonna call a dead pattern. But if that's the case, and we do have confirmation of that breakout there. 
you do have support and resistance up around that target. Let's go back to the daily and see how that holds up. I don't like the slant of that at all. But it works. Could just be really sloppy. Tell you what I'd look for. Once we get up around that left shoulder. So. If we're saying. That would make it cleaner. And that would put your break out further. Nah, I, I, I just think it's too broken, too sloppy for any of that. Um, daily GSUM. It's moving on something, though. To confirm this sloppy-ass cup and handle, I would look for clearance above 208 and this cluster of support and resistance this area right here if it were to break out of this I'd buy I would take at this point I know that's a higher entry than we're looking at it right now but I would want confirmation that we're going to clear this pattern and then I'd take her up to like 280 290 looking for 335 that's a weird one Nothing real pronounced. It's kind of all over the place. Not a lot of great support anywhere. She's sloppy. But that weekly chart's kind of doing something for me. And if you look at... Even if you're not looking for a cup and handle, this downward trend's been broken. So... I'd still be bullish on GSUM, honestly. I just... I would struggle to find an entry point that I'd be comfortable with with, with my risk assessment or my risk tolerance um, but you could certainly make the case to play it if you were going to hang on to it long enough because I do think she is turning around uh, it's just it's real sloppy but 335 I think is about as much as I'd be hanging on to for a while before it came back down uh, BKEP yep. energy play Go into the daily. Somebody's consistent. What is that? 20 to 30 cent window. Again, with shipping and things like that, transportation, energy, commodities, uh, those plays are going to start coming back as the COVID vaccines roll out and people get more comfortable with being out and about. People will have to buy things. People will have to shop. Nothing saying BKIP is going to die. I really like the support it's building in this area. And I love that it has been trading in the spot the whole time. And the RSI value has just stayed low as shit. an earnings report coming up. Fundamentals look really good, man. Revenue looks good. Energy plays are going to be coming back. Hell, even if you were just playing this little swing channel here. Does the RSI channel narrowing and raising mean anything? Uh, you talking about this uh, this kind of constriction right here? Anytime you have a change in the RSI border, uh, it's a technical indicator that the algorithm has identified less likely for movement to go into that area. You, ha If you have constricting borders, you have constricting volatility. 
so you should see consolidation anytime you see RSI border constriction in that algo. BK looks solid, man. If I were going to play this one, this you can see this 20-day EMA has just been acting as kind of a guideline. Not a hard border, just an idea of where we're headed. And uh, it's staying in this top area here. So if, if I could get entry anywhere along this 20 EMA here, I think BCAP's a solid hold for a longer play. I bet you get a nice little, uh, just based on how it's performed and the fact that it is kicking out dividends, their revenue is increasing. Um, I bet you you get a run up to earnings in March. And if this grows in the indicator between dividends and earnings, you're looking at some pretty significant return there. Back out to the monthly. This is monthly on BKEP, BKEP. And we're approaching some pretty critical resistance points. You can see that the uh, 2018 was not kind to them. I'd be curious what they were working with there. But this giant price slide, once you break into that, you see just as much potential for drastic movement up as it did coming down. So if we can pop up out of this 230, 240 area, you're talking about some serious growth potential. BKAP is a mixed bag, man. It's not my style of trade just because it's speculation based. There's a lot of fundamentals involved in it and a lot of uh, anticipation of what the globe is going to do. I like to focus mainly on data plays, but uh, I, I, I put a stamp on BKAP. I think you got some really strong potential there. I think you're uh, this swing trade pattern that it's in, it's been consolidating in since uh, December real clean I like it and your price targets could be sitting somewhere in the neighborhood of four dollars so everybody likes to double their money not my cup of tea but I could tell she looks good pixie we already did pixie boost Jesus Christ keep up uh, we'll we'll go back and uh, I'll clip it and send it to you but um, she's in good shape I do want it to come down a little bit further Lots. L-O-T-Z. Yeah, we're going to do a holding pattern until you show up. My consulting fees are wildly expensive, man. I ain't hanging out for nobody. What the hell happened to car lots? <clears throat> Just an extreme constant around 10... For a hot minute. Let's see dramatic growth over the course of several weeks. And a big dip. Why did you die? Most importantly, because I don't really care about fundamentals, <laughs> this is a bearish engulfing pattern on the daily. All right, yesterday was a great day for car lots. We have completely covered that previous dip. We need to confirm that this is not just a dead cat bounce or bear trap kind of thing. Ugh. So what I'm looking at here is just where it's bottomed out at and what kind of momentum changes we can see that were not previously present in that massive fall off. I gotta tell you, this is a nice sign. Seeing this, uh, this, is, this is just about as clean a double bottom as you could get on a shorter term. And you'll notice that even though the price is at about the same point at the bottom of these candles here, the RSI value is dramatically higher, over double what it was. Meaning that 
it's still fairly oversold even though the price is stabilizing and going up and you can see a kind of an attempted recovery here throughout the night that's what that was our bear our bullish engulfing candle so if you could get a close over this 980 area I'd feel a hell of a lot better about that reversal back out to the four hour again because you can see on the four hour that that value is still real high it still has a lot of potential to fall out here short term I like what it's doing this with you know several attempts at reversals and just continues to drop plus what is the opposite of a golden cross we have an impending death cross which is as bad as it sounds this is the daily and I do emphasize it is as bad as it sounds and then the goal area something like that would indicate that she's just gonna continue dying and I don't like that because that lose money um, I would want to see this close over 980 so we get a confirmed reversal here over a few days. I like what it's doing short term. I think it will happen just based on this double bottom here and that RSI value pulling up like it did. Um, but I would expect it to struggle to clear that. If it does, I think you're going to see a nice reversal. Reversal target will probably bring you back up to this $10 range. I think this 200 MA or 200 EMA is going to act as a guiding factor for that. Wherever it does reverse from, I think it butts up against this 200 EMA. And uh, what it does there will determine whether or not we can test these 10s and 12s again. But just based on, you know, only a dollar range of growth. From a TA perspective, I would not be interested in playing LOTZ. Uh, close CLOB. Oh, baby. BDR, take a look at her. CLOV, Clover Health Investment Corp. Looks like she has found bottom on a very volatile set of trading. I love volatility because volatility means money. And this big swoop here. Clove was a hype one, wasn't it? I swear this one got hyped up or had a big run and a bunch of people were chasing it. I think that's what this drive is. Playing that massive feverish buildup. And if that's the case, we can cut that data out and look at what it was doing just before that to inform us of where we're going. And get an idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the weekly CLOVV. CLOV. This is the daily. This 100 EMA caught it. This is where we found support. It's repeatedly tested it and repeatedly found support. And we're getting higher highs as we go up with that on the daily. One minute ago, the same minds that brought you G-Sum be kept called DNK. Why the toddler getting yelled at in the background? Um, let's go to the four hour. Don't like that. Four hour showing some resistance here. Things pulling down, looking a little sloppier. Might be consolidation in that level. That's fine, but I don't see anything. If we just go with the filled portions of it.
completion on the 12th. A little bullish, a little bullish. Not a whole lot to work with there from a data perspective. Not until this thing gets cleaned up. Um, one hour, you're starting to get some repeating patterns, right? Getting some good trading in there. If it comes down here and reverses around 1240, and then gets rejected again as this hourly 100 EMA comes in. I'd call that a pattern. I'd call it consolidation. I'd look for a breakout Friday. But I wouldn't touch it until we can get some better data in this area showing that it is going to get put better put together. Yo, what's up, man? Actually here to observe the market. Watch out. Going to do a learn. C-L-O-V. Clover Health Investment is a watch. I like what it's doing on this ascending wedge here. These dips still concern me. I'd want to see reversal at 1240. And then dips back not to exceed 13. We'll confirm that wedge there. And uh, possibly look at an entry to run back up to some of these support points. BDR, B I O L, looking to take a look at that. Yeah, markets are closed, closed now, so this stuff is locked in. Uh, we are at BDR. BDR, we played before. I thought that sounded familiar. We made money on this bad boy. Look at you hitting all the price targets we wanted. Good job, Billy. I'm putting in work since then. This song's kind of bothersome. Go away. BDR screened as a low float item. But I think she's going to sell some more. I like what it's doing. I think it's going to keep doing it because it's been doing it for months. And these spikes are a lot of fun to play. But until you could get entry... Like under one I'm not gonna go about one fifty. If I could get entry under one sixty seven on BDR, I'd be happy. The RSI value is going crazy on on the weekly, but you can see it starts dipping into that border on the daily. I'm back up here. How it's gonna dip in, and you see how that upper border is just barely starting to pull up. That border is going to continue to pull up and that value is going to continue to dip as it falls. So as it gets down to where we would expect that entry level to be at, we'll see that value come further into this mid-range. When it makes its growth, you haven't seen it dip, the value that is. You haven't seen the RSI value dip anywhere near the bottom border, except for when this pattern started. So on our trend line, we can identify that, yeah, the RSI value hasn't gone all the way down, but it always reverses when it's at about a midpoint. So you see reversal here, midpoint. Reversal here, midpoint. Reversal here, midpoint. So we'll see that price drop, I think. I think we see a drop in price back down towards this 20 EMA. And then I think the RSI value will correspond with that and hit mid. And we'll have a buy somewhere around 170 maybe a little lower anything under 175 I'd probably be happy with and then uh, we'll continue this swing set that it's working on in terms of a price target let's actually chart it do some work <clears throat> doesn't look like we're gonna have to do much work this thing's been pretty consistent reversal here make our line solid uh, reversal here based on this candle Reversal here based on this. And I'll be somewhere where that trend started. Just for GP. Uh, we'll dial it into the weekly so these spikes look less spastic. They still do. Um, change our weeklies to the blue so we can keep our head straight. Setting resistance here. Here. 
And that's about it. So what we get now that we chart it is we were looking for support around 175, somewhere in that area for a buy with our monthly resistance confirms that. We see that somewhere back here, I don't know, 2015, this thing traded in that range and gave us a support point that is consistent with the trend line, with the daily EMA, and with where we expect to make our entry at. So we can take our daily EMA, say it's gonna do something like that. And we'll say that 171 is gonna be our entry. Price target will go up to the next resistance point. I think we actually found our first like play play of the night guys thank rx boost for some money uh we're gonna say bdr entry at 171 price target is gonna be 271 and our stop loss we'll take a look at where she has fallen out of pattern before it keeps testing and breaking under this 20 ema so that 50 ema is gonna be a better guideline for our stop loss that does give us a little more risk but that lady says i don't know what the hell i'm doing so y'all don't listen to me this is not financial advice listen to the ticker on the front of the screen that tells that this is just my opinion i am not a financial advisor and anything that i say here is purely what i'm going to do and not telling you what you do with your money what she said probably couldn't hear um yeah Gabdex, what's up, buddy? To the moon. Dogecoin, AMC, and Jimmy, get the fuck out of my chat with those meme stocks losing money for everyone. If you follow a streamer that's telling you to still buy them, you're probably fucking up. Bang, gap. Yeah. Time them out for like eight seconds. Um, so, yeah, this 50 EMA is going to be our stop loss. Again, this is going to create a wider margin of risk, but we do have a lot of gain potential here. So that allows us to be a little more gambly with our uh, risk tolerance which should be the root of your trading pattern so we're going to say um, where's our wick at haters <laughs> love you buddy good to see you man good to see you in chat um, based okay is he asleep Love you. Okay. Um, based on this trend line and our 20 EMA movement, we're going to say a BDR entry under 175, ideally 171, where we have confluence with our 20 EMA and monthly resistance. Price target's going to be 271. Stop loss, we're going to look at a complete fallout down under the 50 EMA uh probably somewhere on this trend at 140. A lot of risk right there, but the potential gains will outweigh that. <clears throat> Need even 50% gab and an OTC. What are you doing? He's a gambler, folks. DNK is next on the list. Phoenix tree. Holdings. The fuck? Nothing about that looks appetizing. Back it out to the weeklies on Phoenix Tree. That looks a little bit better on the weekly. Right? Um, check it out. That's your break point. Here. That's where we got our reverse loft, that horrible downslope. Take a look at S T O N. Yeah. End of that trend line, we broke off. D and key came up again. This is a DNK weekly chart. Um. That loss slide stopped there, pulled up, got rejected by the 20-week EMA, and it's been kind of downward consolidation at that point. 
Is that bridged? It did fall below 50%, so I wouldn't trust that. Where's my dam? There it is. sense for a bottom. I gotta tell you, DNK doesn't look great. RSI algorithm, you've got constricting volatility coming down there, as well as it being way overbought. Just don't like it. I think you might have found bottom there. Found a new one coming up, but I see no reason for growth yet. Everything's coming down still. It's a nice bullish candle today for sure. But I don't know what that's based on. And barring some confirmation of that, I really wouldn't want to mess with it. Not till you get some better signals, because it's just, it's all over the place going down right now. DNK, I don't like. Again, from a technical perspective, it could have some great fundamentals or be doing something to make somebody a lot of business. Um, Biolace, B I O L. Thunder volume. a little closer in right out the gate up at the four hour because I think I see and I do see a fan favorite cup and handle here this is our big SPY dip we can kind of ignore that it's a bit of an anomaly harassing me um, so if we ignore that anomaly from the big macro dip that caused everything to fall there for a little bit this cup does have a bit of a handle coming down supported by the 4 hour 20 EMA RSI does indicate that we should see some growth we got a nice reversal here on our dip that did not exceed 50% of the cup those are happy things to see. So we'll take the, from the shoulder line to the depth of the cup. Cup and handle, baby. Beautiful bullish pattern. And we're gonna apply it to the point of breakout. So you would take your shoulder line and set your breakout from there. The depth of the cup at the point of breakout to establish your price target. You can color coordinate out thing, things how you like. I just, that's how I organize stuff in my head. So, that looks good to me. I think we get a decent reversal here. We should see the beginning of that breakout sometime towards the end of the week, uh, towards the end of the day on Friday, if everything goes well. Let's look at the daily, see how that fares in terms of price tracking you can kind of see that's in line with this ascending broadening wedge ish thing that we got going on if we take our price target and put it in line with uh, with our gains here that creates a nice consistent track that you like to see in terms of entry we'll dial into the one hour and you can see the cups growth on that right shoulder a little more pronounced because of it RSI algorithm confirming full reversal here. 
Theoretically, if you're saying that this is a confirmed cup and handle, your entry point could be anywhere under that neckline, under 150. I like to play things a little bit tighter, just, you know, we're trying to mitigate risk here. Uh, Sugar Daddy, 220-bit donation. Appreciate that, bud. Thank you. Um, so I would want it under the next resistance line, anywhere under 140. B-I-O-L, cup and handle formation on the 1 and 4-hour charts, entry under 140. Price target is going to be 197 from the depth of the cup, and we're looking for 50% dip for the failure in the pattern, which would put it under this 100 EMA. On the one hour, anything under 125 breaks our pattern. BIOL upgraded to a buy. We'll include that on tomorrow morning's report. Jai from the Bronx and Top Eve, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. OBLN check, another fan favorite we'll get to. We're exiting BIOL as a buy. We're going to go ahead and add that uh, to our watch list here. We like it. And BDR. Uh, next up, STON. Stonemore, what are you? Ooh, baby. If you've got an eye for TA or you've been hanging out here long enough, you know exactly what the hell that is. That's a big boy flag on the daily charts. We do love to see that. Drop our data here a little bit. This is a very low volume ticker, though, which is always concerning. Uh, that Golden Cross, so tell them boost. That's that kind of shit we like to see. That's that productivity. Um... Lower volume tickers are crazy volatile, right? You've got less people buying, less people selling. There is more opportunity for manipulation. There's more opportunity for a big sell or a big buy to have a more adverse impact on the price of the stock. So, yes, there is opportunity and volatility, but these can be more difficult to chart. As a result, you can set parameters that you think it should trade in, and it could have wild spikes in or out of what your expectations are. So, tread carefully on lower volume tickers. We'll say that. Um, just looking at the weekly here, you can see that we've got a great reversal, double bottom. You could call this a cup and handle on the weekly if we wanted to. We'll get into that in just a second. Just call me Dan. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for the follow. Um, monthly, you get a better, clearer picture of that cup. Not as pronounced as you'd like to see. Um, algorithm kind of gets wonky on the monthly but let's go ahead and start charting we'll get to work on this one i do like the way it looks we want to see where it's going um <clears throat> monthly changes in momentum we'll establish some support and resistance lines see each one of these step ups gets a little bit choppy so those will give us some some higher, harder checkpoints to clear through as this thing grows. Um, comfortable with where we're at. We'll just set one more higher just in case we're being optimistic. Then dial it into the one week. Same thing. Want to go back a decent data set. We'll take blue. Weekly resistance and support. Anytime there's a major momentum change in the stock. Most of this stuff looks to be covered by the monthly. Tag one right here just for this section there. And I think that should get us for the range that we're working in for now. Uh, dial it back into the daily. You can see that based on those support and resistance lines, we're coming up on um, what will be the third confirmation that this weekly support at 273 is valid. So bounce here, bounce here decent amount of that cluster is going to be based on what was traded in this area. Our RSI algorithm has broadened a little bit, so we've got increased volatility, but that value has bottomed out, indicating that it is oversold. Vatek, what's up, buddy? Big brain moves. We're here to make money. I do like me some stuff. Who called this one out? Good eye on you. Well done. 
So assuming that 273 support is valid, we're going to expect that fallout. We'll dial in a little bit further here. This is the four hour chart on STON. Further confirmation that that RSI value is bottoming out repeatedly. Memesaker dropping the prime sub second month. Welcome back, my friend. Welcome back. Enjoy the limited emotes. If you do have Amazon Prime, you do get a free sub per month on Twitch. You can give that to the streamer of your choice. Support a content creator. You get ad-free viewing as well if you drop it on me. Like Mr. Meme Seeker did, I do very much appreciate it. You only get one a month, so it's really cool getting somebody's like, this is your 30-day reward. It's kind of sick. OBLN, what price do you think it'll be tomorrow? Uh, we'll take a look at that in just a second, Top Eve. That looks like OBLN's next uh, on the chart here. This trend line is going to continue to carry us down into that support area. I like where it's at. Um, I like the potential for growth. I like the support that it's got on it. We have multiple indicators telling us that what, uh, what we're looking at is the bottom of the pattern. One hour provides a better, clearer picture of that one. You can see the one hour 200 EMA is probably going to be our last line of reversal here. So if we extend that out towards that pattern and where this next price dip is going to be, I don't imagine we see anything under like 285, which we have confluence with some data on this side. But multiple trading in this area provides a resistance for that. So right out the gate I like STON data for confirms it further lower lows we're gonna set STON as a buy entry under 289 And we're basing that off of that previous resistance area we're looking at on the one hour is in this range here from the beginning of January. Anything under this candle, under 289, this gap is where I want to buy at. That's where I want to make my entry at. Price target, we're going to go up to our next monthly resistance. I don't think 346 holds up against this. It's got plenty of upward momentum. Not to mention that the weekly flag is just going to launch it. What we're looking for is a repeat of this flag pattern. You can kind of see the exact same thing happen back from November to December. You get this kind of weaker flagpole with a little hiccup right here. Launches. You get consolidation in this price range, and then it takes off again. You see the same thing in a more drastic version here. It comes up, hiccup halfway through the flagpole, comes up. You get better consolidation, and then we should see... It rocket again that's the goal that's what we're going to be trading off of we have multiple indicators from the rsi the monthly and weekly support lines and these moving averages are all telling us that this is a fairly viable version of that um price target wise i'd want it just under 390 because it's gotten so volatile and because it does have such low volume it's at more risk to fall apart as it widens and broadens this scheme here uh, so testing further than that, we're going to want to see where it's at after it gets above 346. So price target at 390 for a stop loss. I'm saying this thing falls apart if it breaks under and back into this pattern. We'll want to carry the next moving average support up to determine that. So if it falls and breaks into this range here, I think we'll see another dip almost all the way down to 2. And that's when we'll want to get the hell out. So anything under this support line at 273, we'll take it to the bottom of this candle. 272, stop loss at 272. Making some notes. These will be updated in the trading discord tomorrow for those looking to make the same moves I am uh, this is STON Stonemore Inc we're looking for entry under 289 price target of 390 and a stop loss of 272 pretty happy with that one yeah the bearded hobo guru 
STONs complete. Let's move on to OBLN. Level 1 Therapeutics. Didn't we play this already? We did play this already. We made money off this one already. We're in this one. Rem! You're in the car and can't pay attention? <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Get the hell off your phone. We are playing it right now, Boost. I'm not supposed to memorize these things. That's what we got apps for. We're printing money, Rem. We're printing money. Um, OBLN we did buy. It did start bouncing around in the resistance levels that we expected already. We made 50 or 30, almost 36% off of this one the last time we traded it. Wish we would have stayed in, though. How about that rocket ship? Things you don't learn. Uh, Podtech, that's my Discord. If you want access to the trading Discord, shoot me a message. Um, I'm, I moderate one, and I'm active in a few others. Um, but uh, we'll get you involved in the right one. There's there's guys trading a $100 total portfolio. There's other people swinging $50,000 a trade. Um, so we got we got all, all ranges. Everybody's there to, to learn, make money, and uh, encourage anybody to get involved. Even if you have no clue what you're doing, investing is the way. OBLN looks fantastic. Doing exactly what we expected it to do. We bought a little bit earlier. Um, what platform do you trade on? Uh, I do most of my swing trading, which is the stuff that we're looking on here, on Weeble. If you do uh, exclamation point Weeble, uh, you can get a referral code that you'll get free stocks on when you sign up, and it gives me free stocks too, which is nice. Um, it's not the most user-friendly app because it has so many options. You can customize the holy shit out of that app. What it shows you, there's lots of trading options. It takes a little bit to learn, so it's not as user-friendly as something like Robinhood, but it will educate you better in the process of trading and get you more familiar with the nuts and bolts of things and give you the opportunity to make more specific decisions in trading and make more money off of it. Um, yeah, Pawtech, if you're just getting started, I would highly recommend Weeble. It's, it's a great platform to... Uh, to do just basic trading and as you progress it will you can just start using other options in there that are have preset defaults um, that you can start tinkering with as you learn highly recommend it plus trading from your phone's nice like if you're a lunch break or something um obln was another one like izea that fell victim to the macro market movement and was kind of got bounced around um, by those big swings, but it still stayed within the patterns that we've set. These these resistance lines just aren't doodling. They're actually based on previous data, and uh, it matters. Should I drop the Discord link? Um, Fen, the last time we did that, we got like 40 people in. At the same time, I want to be a little more selective uh, <laughs> about who joins. I obviously want to be inclusive or whatever, but um, having it just for, for any randos to pop in can get a little weird. Uh... The levels that it traded at were consistent with what we expected. And if you ignore the wicks, like if you don't pay attention to that batshit crazy volatility that that macro market movement created, we're still in a beautiful upswing. We're still on track for our original price targets and maybe then some. You know, this, this thing has potential legs to run for a long time. A um, lot of room to gap up. But uh, for now, we're being conservative, looking for that that push up to 593 just under that next resistance um, if we do a longer hold and shoot for 13 and, and looking for the moon on this one it'll be based on how it performs on this next area but obln i currently hold i have stock in i think um like 14 percent of my portfolio is in it or something like that it's a confident play it's made money for us in the past and we're looking for it again um, I think that wraps up chat requests for different charts. Um, IZEA is one that I was really bullish on prior to today's bat shittery that the market dipping created. It pushed IZEA out of pattern. And uh, while it still looks healthy, I kind of want to keep an eye on it. The majority of trading tomorrow just to make sure that it doesn't dip down under this 466 line here again because it punching through that trend line really worried me now our literally every indicator says it's going to continue to go up 
Um, but those macro movements can shake a lot of people up and cause a lot of rapid selling early on in the day that will just defeat the pattern and push it down out of a playable point. So up until about lunchtime tomorrow, that's going to be one of my primary focuses. We'll be making sure that it stays in range because I do have commons and calls for it. A um, lot of potential, a lot of upside on this stock. Talking $12.62 is one of my final PTs for it. Um, but at the end of the day, none of this is assured. You know, we, we've been playing IZEA since June of last year, and it's done a lot of fun stuff for us. But nothing is guaranteed, and we want to make sure that the plays that we do have are well monitored and well managed. That way that it does dip, we can find a viable rebuy. All right, cool. And Pata, if you have questions, dude, as you're getting it set up or... or um, you open it and it looks Greek and Chinese to you. shoot me a message. Uh, I'll get you in, in the discord and uh, we can get you up and running, man. It's uh, the first hurdle is the highest, I think, because it's a, it's a totally different vocabulary. Everything about it's different. But once you get the hang of it, we can really start making some moves. Um, AMTX is another one I like got a real nice pop today their products go live on Amazon this weekend they've also got a pending contract with India that hasn't quite made it out just yet but when it does we'll make some nice money it's a conservative price target around $10 on that do I use the code to get you some credit um, if you click the link that uh, took you there and downloaded that through that link it'll automatically apply it. like you don't have to enter the code or anything that link should give you uh uh, should properly allocate it for my referral or whatever. What would you be looking at to get back into iMac? Back into iMac. iMac had an inverse head and shoulders play, which usually just does beautiful, beautiful things. And it, look at it, look at it, guys. We made that prediction, and it hit that mark damn near perfect. I think it went one cent over. One penny, one penny. We did great. Another fantastic trade. Inverse head and shoulders is one of the strongest bull patterns on the market. We love seeing them. They're real difficult to form, so anytime you find them, it's, it's an absolute buy for me. Um, iMac should dip off of this resistance. If it has enough momentum coming out of this bull pattern here, it'll carry up to 283, but I, I really, really expect it to fall um, off this 257 it could do wild shit and, and not come back uh, we saw that with timber we saw it with prty but um, let's go back to the one hour two slot be another low volume one so it's a little more difficult to track there's a better look but you can see how the rsi value has just skyrocketed outside of the border here and it's outrun every single moving average it has, and it's outrun VWAP, and it's outrun every support in that range. And the last four, five, six times it's done that, it dumps back down, right? There's just, there's nothing holding it up in that range. So if it continues to push to the 283 line, I'd be surprised it's not outside of crazy, but um, that's what you did. Potsack, appreciate it, buddy. You get, we both get free stocks out of the way, and so it's it's uh, it's always fun when people give you free money. Um, but I would expect it to come back and start settling around where the rest of these failed to, because I think that establishes some uh, some support. You can see that in how much this has started to cluster in these areas. Every time it gets around that just under that two dollar mark, you get repetitive trading, repetitive trading. So I, I think we see a dump down here, um, down to what will be the 50 EMA on the four hour. You can see this support line comes here and you'll have some confluence right there. So I think we'll see a dump down to around two. If it reverses there, might be worth playing again. You know, see if we can't get her back up to that 350 level, but uh, we, we'll, we'll need to see what it develops past that uh, that right shoulder here. Uh, NTM we did, OBLN, Litecoin, flagging, you see that boost? <laughs> yeah, buddy. What is that, 50 to the north? The push to 200 begins soon. PPSI still in great shape, doing everything we expect it to. Looking for a launch out of her. 
Right, flag up and run. Guys, good screen. Some of these stuffs uh, were chat recommended that we're going to buy. BDR and BIOL look good. Um, STON as well. We need to add that to the launch here. Really liked STON. Good looking stock. Got some viable plays to start heading into the end of the week with. Um, we made a lot of sales today, so my entry positions tomorrow will be pretty heavy, I think. Uh, we're going to look at to disperse it over those three tickers. Maybe look at getting into crypto, too, because Bitcoin's going to start doing its little uh, dip and run thing again as it prepares for the weekend. Yeah. So stuff like Riot and Mara tomorrow morning will probably be decent buys at least to hold through Monday next checkpoint I've got for Bitcoin is 55.6 where we should head next let's see if the market itself doesn't collapse <laughs> I'm telling you man that, that dip under 380 is real it's gonna happen this is not sustainable growth. I'm not saying we need to come all the way down to the 350s, but you can't keep pressuring all-time highs the whole time and not have a correction. All right, y'all. I'm about out of whiskey. I'm about out of tickers to chart. Appreciate the recommendations. Appreciate everybody hanging out. Thank you for the donations, the subscriptions, and the support. I uh, play with Workhorse Group. I, I've scalped it. That's, uh, was that, WKHS? I've scalped it a few times as it run. I uh, haven't really ever held it. Damn, boy, she looks like she wants to go again, though, doesn't she? Chat, this is that upward consolidation that we were talking about earlier. Constant buildup on this run. Supposedly signing a deal with the government. Yo, Room, what's up, buddy? Fourth month. Coming in with a prime sub. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Thank you. Enjoy the limited emotes. I'm glad you're hanging out, man. It's always good to see you. Um, yeah, WKHS, that, that looks like it's a bit of a hype run. Um, there's nothing real technical building up. I don't see any earnings or anything supporting that kind of build up, but... There's a better look at it. Um, you can see that constricting RSI borders, top and bottom. This is that's a that's restricting the volatility. Uh, you can see where that that uh, this top growth line right here kind of died off, and that's reflected by this upper border pulling down on our algorithm. So it's at kind of a critical failure point right here. If it bounces again, I don't see it going much more than 44 without some kind of catalyst. If they do get a contract with the government, they do get some kind of announcement for that. You'll see a doubling of this increase stacked over here. So like, what is it? 23 to 40. You'll see another like $17 rise off this range right here puts you up over 50 with a government contract whether that's sustainable you have to look at it at the time because this thing's just kind of all over the map but uh she's set up well to take off with given given the right amount of news been lurking i'm glad man i'm glad i'm hope, hoping i'm helping you out hoping i'm learning a little bit uh doing some educate <laughs> CCL and CUK for Elvis Freshly. Carnival Corp. Carnival is in cruise lines. Yeah, hotel resorts, cruise lines. These boys are taking a beating from the Rona. Try and find the article and send it to me. Yeah, for sure. Looks like she's recovering a little bit. Anytime you get vaccine news, you'll see uh, commodities and travel stuff like this recover. Carnival is one of the companies that's faring a little bit better because they've had they have newer ships um 
they have more domestic ports and they have more domestic staff than most cruise lines so they're more eligible for some of the u.s government relief programs whether it sees and gets back up to some of these other growth points that's debatable people are going to be leery for you know a couple years about illnesses but it looks like it's getting oh boy volatility on that Personally, I wouldn't be touching any of the uh, any of the commodities until we see some kind of indicator that the U.S. vaccines are being distributed properly. I know we're plateauing a little bit in caseloads, but U.S. perception of travel is really what's going to drive the value of that stock. Ultimately, I mean, long term, if you're looking for a long hold, I don't think you can go wrong with uh, with any kind of shipping, any kind of entertainment, or any kind of oil, because it's got to come back. Gabby, taking off, buddy. It's good seeing you. We'll catch you around, gorgeous. Yeah, from a technical standpoint, Carnival's just kind of at a precarious spot. It's it's about as low as it's going to get. Uh, CUK, kind of the same thing, same situation. Uh, similar pattern. If you if you wanted to make the case for that being a cup and handle, you could. I don't think it gets much higher than the uh, than the EMAs for now. Um, I'd want if I were looking for an entry for a longer hold, I'd want something under this shoulder here, an entry under 1769, uh, just from what that dip should provide. But again, pivoting on news, a fundamental play there. Short-term scalps. Yeah, I don't know. Not buying it. Not, not excited about the uh, these these big gaps, these jumps, these springs. Be good for a momentum trade. Like if you were doing intraday stuff, looking at a five-minute, and just seeing these massive jumps and dips. If you could hit those peaks and valleys, you could make some decent money day trading the shit out of these. But uh, if you're PDT restricted or anybody that has less than $25,000 in their account, probably wouldn't look to it that much. You've broken out of trend here, so you should see an increase. Hell, that's a $3 swing. If you get a bullish candle tomorrow, uh, you could probably play it to just over 20 This pop right here. Yo, Trev, what's up? No dark mode. See, I exist in the daylight. I know you, you, uh, fucking weird actual traders hiding tunnels and shit. But here we, we like the sun, like sun W. You're in a cave right now. Bullshit. I've seen your office. You're redecorated. A little disappointed you got rid of the office motif. The sun is... I do, I'm like see-through. Are you kidding me? I'm not white. I'm transparent. Which is funny because I actually tan really well. I just work... I go to work before the sun's up. And I'm coming home as a setting. So I never get to see it. You're <laughs> a vampire. And all of us are dwellers. Uh, I get to use the grill. No, I put the grill together. It took fucking three hours, apparently. It was a construction project. But uh, I still have to do the initial burn-in to, to cook off all like the shipping oils and stuff like that. Um, Pookie is flying in this weekend. He's buying a plane in South Carolina and is going to meet here. He's going to spend a couple days here to hang out with us and then fly back to Texas in the, in the new plane. So we're going we're gonna to do some ribs and do a little barbecue to break the smoker in. Call him Casper. <laughs> ETC for CTH. Yo, Trev coming in with a tier one sub for the first time. The man, the myth, the legend. You guys want to learn where I have started learning and confirming a lot of my technical analysis? It's that man right there. If you don't follow him, shout out to Trev. He is an absolute brilliant chart man. He's fantastic at, uh, at predicting the future with this magic money geometry. So y'all check him out. Go drop him a follow. Shoot him a sub. He does stream during the mornings when the markets are open and live. 
so you can get a better idea for how the technical analysis works in real time as the stocks move. So uh, absolutely go check that man's channel out. Appreciate the sub, buddy. It's good seeing you. Uh, ETAC. Whoa, what do we got here? ETC. Oh, we're talking crypto. Talking crypto. Um, Ethereum's fun because it's one of the few altcoins that's not really tracking as much in lockstep with Bitcoin. Um, ETC has its own user base. It has its own hype. It's got its own history. Uh, so it has a lot more to work with. It's going to dip soon, in my opinion. Just, just I, I don't think it's sustainable at this point, but I don't think that we're going to see anywhere near lower than 9. Um, I was talking to some folks about this earlier today. Uh, ThetaCoin, Ethereum, and... Um, what was the fuck another one? We were talking about a few cryptos, but Theta, Theta and, and Ethereum were the ones that they're, are going to be making their own moves, irregardless of what Bitcoin does. Obviously, it, BTC is going to have a major impact on macro movement for cryptocurrency, but these are ones that are going to continue to show gains regardless of where it's at. Yeah, man, just trying to make a little money. We're printing cash out here. We got a couple tonight. I don't know how long you've been lurking, but... Uh, BIOL, uh, cup and handle, BDR, uh, we're looking for an entry lower to the resistance line. Got some nice big swings up to 271. I'll get these posted in the Discord tomorrow. And then STON, looking real pretty. Flagged on some big boy shit. Appreciate the follows. Showing some love, guys. Trev really is that dude. Um, but yeah, Ethereum, uh, both in futures and actual underlying. Uh, pretty bullish on these. These guys are gonna be making some. Yeah, this is what we were talking about trading these upward channels. They're both gonna dip soon, but uh, that continued growth is real. Biol to the moon, baby. Um, Theta coin for those of you who are unaware of it. Uh, here's a good one to look at it on. Look at it in U.S. dollars. Has been making some serious moves um, over the past couple months. A good friend sent this to me and was like, hey, you need to check this out. And then like a day later, it just starts rocketing. Um, saw some great consolidation throughout January and February, and it's spiking again. Uh, got a longer PT on it, or just over $4. And uh, they're... they're <laughs> They're really set up well to make some money. If you, if you have a way to trade crypto, if you have a crypto wallet, um, highly recommend checking these guys out. That's most of the, uh, most of what we wanted to look at tonight. Cover the whole gamut, yeah? Longest stream we've done in a little while. We went through... What was that? 14 different tickers. Uh, Theta. Pawtech. Send us off with a quick doge. We do, Yeah, well, let's, let's dive into some memes, y'all. GME. Not the damn... We need the actual... 5120, you poor, poor bastard. It's gonna get a big fucking F in chat for those that held. Could you imagine being the guy that bought at 483 and it's at 51? Big oof. Big oof. Didn't do Doge first. <laughs> Jade, you know how I operate. I'm scared of a meme. Dogecoin in US dollars. The fuck? It's flagging. Y'all are going to make me buy a damn meme coin, aren't you? Trev, look at this shit. Honestly, Doge is bullish. That's what I'm saying. I just I pulled it up and I'm like, 
I, I'm an unbiased trader. I focus on data. I trade off of stats and charts. I don't even know the names of half the companies I buy and sell. I don't care. They don't matter. This is a bullish pattern. Jay Bose, appreciate the follow. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you, bud. Welcome to the stream. Actually, bullish pattern on Doge. That's annoying. <laughs> Fuck it. Let's chart it. Check it out. We're going to go from our flagpole, the beginning of that period of growth. And we're going to go up to the peak, just the top of that wick. And we'll apply it to the point of breakout. This is a more conservative way to do it. Typically, you'd want to put it on top of the flag. I like to get my money and get the hell out. So, peak, point, we're going to say breakout, end of the week, because cryptos like to run for the money. Primary PT on Dogecoin at 1.16. Are you kidding me? Damn it. <clears throat> I heard 10 tonight might be a pump happening. Who else is reliable on it? It's possible shit. All Elon's got to do is tweet it and boop. That's nuts, bro. Dogecoin primary PT 116 with a decimal. Entry under that bullish candle. Last one up here. Anything under 0.075. Stop loss. We can follow that pattern on that. This is silly. Why am I charting a meme stock? I hate you guys. <laughs> Already learned about a bunch of Doge a while back in Bitcoin. Tweeted today and bought some for his kid. Good God. Soon they're going to start accepting Dogecoin for uh, Tesla recharge. Oh, AMC. If you don't like Jelly Belly, you're un-American. All right, check it out. We were looking at something earlier today. That I forget what it was. But I wanted to... There's an identical pattern here. This is what's referred to as an Adam and Eve. All right? You get a dramatic, sharp spike. This is the Adam. And then Eve is a much more rounded, consistent growth. This is a hardcore bear pattern. This means your shit is about to die. If you see something like this, and you get a confirmation of that Eve, which is the dip under the left portion of where Eve starts, if it drops under there, run away. Take your money and go home. You know, the Bitcoin network... Yeah, remember you were talking about that? The, the video, the demo that they were doing with the lightning charging stuff or whatever the hell it's called, showed that the guy paid with Bitcoin. A spike in the curved bearish movement? Yes, sir. Adam, Eve, that's your confirmation point, and then it's just, it's dead. Anything from that point on, you're just bleeding money. And that was AMC. So when you see that shit, you need this range right here to confirm a recovery. If it dips under that, it's dead. Uh, was it SGRP did that? SGRP. Oops, don't move the lines. Hey guys, look, it's doing exactly what we expect it to every time. I love technical analysis. Shit, I might play it again if it comes back down to around 150. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Hit that 140 PT and kept going. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, AMC, GME, the hype is dead. I love them. But everybody's on weed stocks now. We scalped Sundial today for 58% in one day, which was nice. Uh, expect her to do some more big things, I think. Discord was on fire with that one. Anything else we want to eyeball, y'all? Doge does live... I'm, I'm legit... I think I have to at this point, right? Like, I bought GME and sold it at 420 I kind of have to buy Doge.
How do you ignore that? I don't care what company loves. You see that pattern, you have to buy it. Jay Bose, you still in timber, baby? Them diamond hands. That's a damn good ticker. Look at it. Look at it. Inverse head and shoulders, like we talked about with the iMac, with PRTY, all those fun ones. She ran all the way up, tapped that 194 area, and it's coming back down for a bit, kind of refuel a little bit. Be watching, sitting in, if you can look on OTC. SIRC? Yeah. Take a look at it. Yeah, so Timber's been printing. Um, I think 175 was our PT initially on that one. You can see uh, today it just big dicked its way through this gap that uh, was from that August 2020 slide. And now it's hit resistance here and is bouncing and pinging around there. If it, don't move the lines, if it consolidates in this point, you'll get another jump up to 220, which would be cool to see. I don't see it making it past that because there's just way too much history in that range. And that will also, you'll get confluence down here with that 200. EMA is going to come in and smack it as well. Um, so that's why I got out of timber, but she's still printing. If it consolidates here, that's another easy 20-30% run. Might be worth taking a look at sometime next week. But uh, just, a, just a great ticker all around. That one was fun to play. <clears throat> Pawtex got those. I love it. So SIRC, you don't trust yourself. Bro, what's up, buddy? It definitely is not PUBG. It's magic money geometry. Yeah, I wonder whose fault that is. <laughs> I had to disable them, dude. They were giving viewers heart attacks. Ooh, solar integrated roofing company. Big spike in a day. Mm hmm, 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 hmm. We got to go shorter term on these big spikers. Yeah, Boost, we can take a look at that. Let's take a look at four hour here. Ooh, a reversal. Ooh, a reversal on an EMA supported by RSI. Jade, you might be onto something. Go to the one hour. Mm-hmm. 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 Higher lows. Reversal on a four hour. RSA confirmation of bottom. Bullish Harami candle on that last time frame. Yeah. That's what we got, buddy. Jade. You get a gold star for the day. What do you think? We'll call a breakout if it clears that. She's going to, too. This one's going to go. That's breakout here. Where'd my line go? Did I just throw it away? There it is. Come here. Boop. Considering how this day has gone for me to take a gold star. Yeah, you got screwed over by NTN, didn't you? A lot of people got hurt uh, by that dip. Triggered a lot of stop losses. And then it just fucking rocketed right out the gate. Boost, that was the one I was telling you about that compound got burned on. Thirty-one. How are you in OTC and trading up almost five dollars? 
Post that pick in the analysis. Yeah, well, definitely, uh, definitely, Jade. I'd legit like this. This is a good looking ticker. I think I might get that one on Fidelity. Solar integrated roofing systems. It's a solar play too, so it's going to get the Biden hype. I like it. I think if it dumps under 150, you get trouble, but. Uh, That's good looking moves. Got to stop on today. Yeah, dude. Like I legit had to go in and manually cancel several stop losses because it uh, NTN was a big one. Um, just ripped hard under resistance. The, the movement was too artificial. It was too sudden. It had zero, you know, basis on anything that the individual tickers were trading on, and you could see. That big macro dump, and just because that it was that same shit right before a Fed phone call, everybody panics. Still bought. Okay, so you're bearish on it because of a twenty cent difference. Was it three ninety fifty? Was was uh was where we wanted it to close to get out of this dip? Dude, look, ignore the wicks. We're golden. Everything's fine. Boop. If you play the wicks, now we look scary. No wicks? We're good. Claw the wick? We're bad. <laughs> Maybe I'm just an optimist. We will pump SVY. <laughs> Isn't that convenient? J-Pow started talking right as the dip happened. Right? Papa Pow got us covered. No, if Cosmic isn't bearish, if Cosmic's gay bear ass is not uh, uh, bearish on SPY, then 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 I'm comfy hanging out with the uh, with the bull crowd. Still, I think we're still in good shape. I got some longer macro stuff. I'm looking pullbacks to 350 and whatnot, but I think we're golden. Shit, that's five tickers to play, chat. We did good. Bro, you doing PUBG tonight? AMTX just looking real pretty. Gonna be out of money tomorrow. Appreciate it, Trey. Appreciate it. Yeah, things were good, y'all. Um, several good tickers. A lot of support. A lot of chat interaction. I love that. That's my favorite part. Being able to talk through this stuff helps me out, too. Oh, shit. TLRY. My bad, Boost. My bad. Boop. Fucking launch pad that this thing is. All right, so it closed at 63.91. Let's see where it's at. 400 yet? <laughs> yeah. I have TLRY somewhere... I think it was like 107. It was a pretty quick price target. Uh, Coco and the boys think it's going to 140. Appreciate the info, interesting stuff. Yeah, Pawtech, like I said, dude, shoot me a message. We'll get you in the right Discord. Um, get you educated on how to use the app, how to actually execute trades, and, uh, and what you're looking for, and, and, and how to learn this stuff. I obviously like the technical side of things, but there's, there's guys in there that you can learn fundamentals if you really want to follow how companies performed to uh, to learn how to trade it. I think it's going to 150. Yeah. This thing's going to launch, dude. Like, proper launch. Monthlies. Yeah, there's your, there's your 70 resistance here. 100 resistance. Coco's got her coming back up to here. Just a massive, massive retrace of this long ass pattern. <laughs> Jade's picking it up. We're getting along. Boost is actually starting to chart on his own. Proud of him. Yeah, uh, TLRY longer hold. Like this is. I've got. I'd, I'd grab this one of my IRA. 
like actual long-term, long-term hold. Got to educate the folks, man. BTC doing more hood ship. Yep. Look at that chat. I told you. I told you she was dipping. <laughs> Trev, you still on board with the uh, Bitcoin to 100K by November? Kelly's out here gambling on shit that's not GME, making actual money. So. stock thing a meme idea or is it legit see it's a little bit of both um you have strong fundamentals and speculation because of how prolific we expect weed to be under the biden administration and the more it gets legalized in states but you also have the internet getting it latched onto it because it's fucking weed <laughs> and everybody wants it to be legal so uh, they're hyping the hell out of it. It's the flavor of the month thing. And you'll see it rotate. Penny Stocks is a great example on Reddit. Where one week it's bio plays or pharma plays. The next one it's COVID plays. The next one it's energy. Each week or so seems to have a theme. And the tickers that get pumped on there do get a little meme because of that. But most of them will have some merit. So if, if you get in early enough and, and you're paying attention to your exits, it's a good way to make money without having to do a whole lot of effort. Jelly Belly. Whiskey. Last bit of it. Cheers. Celebrate your victories, guys. We had a good day today. Um, a lot of folks lost money because it was a red day. I closed out four positions um, ahead 187% for the year, uh, year to date in 20, 30, 40 days. 40 days were up almost 190%. So celebrate your victories because they're not going to be every day. Um, take stock in it. Set your stop losses. Prevent you from getting murdered too bad on these big dips. And don't be afraid to buy back in because scared money don't make money. My streaming schedule lately has been whatever the hell I can get on a computer. <laughs> I just moved. This is the, the, the new office. Um, I've still got to get my uh, Nano Leaf stuff set up in the background and get the second PC up and running. We're pretty much we're like 90% unpacked. The remaining 10% is just a bunch of my bullshit. But the goal is to get back onto uh, three to four days a week again. Um, it'll be more stock heavy. I, it was primarily video games, but... Um, people seem to be enjoying this, so we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. Mike's good quality. Appreciate it, buddy. Now I got, um, dual PC set up and like actual mixers and stuff like that from, uh, from when I was streaming games and, uh, was fortunate enough to get set up with some decent equipment from viewers and donations from subs and stuff like that were real helpful in getting it set up. Right? Hopefully I can get to the point where I can start um, having a couple days off during the week or work from home, do some uh, do some live trading, show you guys how to do it during the day. Because uh, a lot of y'all, like we're back and forth um, in Discord and on Messenger and stuff, asking me questions about what's happening here, what's going on here. But it's much easier to, you know, follow PPSI whenever it dips and it's like, holy shit, everything's cratering. What's going on? What do I do? To be able to pull up 
a 15 minute chart and say look you know it's, it did that because it came down bumped up against this resistance here Th this tank right here is artificial that's that's macro market movement it's bumping against that line again it's going to recover here off this trend line it's going to go up like it's much easier to show that stuff in real time than it is to like come back and show it after the fact because then you know it looks like hindsight's 2020 gives you a better feel for it if you can do it while it's happening dopes get tough carry tonight <laughs> scrim what's up buddy yeah man I'm going to do a lot more. I'm going to start clipping them. I'm going to curate them a little bit and get uh, get some of the better calls up onto uh, up YouTube so we have a better archive of shit. Podtech, appreciate that, brother. Scream, I start doing dailies, man. You're going to have to start carrying me in ranked. Trey, I appreciate you checking in, man. Have a good night. We'll see you in Discord. <laughs> but that's gonna do it for me y'all i'm gonna hop off of here rest a little bit i'll get these plays that we found posted in discord and uh we'll figure out what the uh <laughs> what the entries exits and stop sorry everybody say hi kelly hi and uh let's make some money close the week out strong we're doing great already way ahead of goals she wants boats and hose, so we're going to get a boat, and she's going to get a hose. <laughs> Cheers, y'all. Love you guys. See you around. Boosh, have a good night. Thank you for the donations, the support, and the chat, everybody. We'll see you next time.